so it's time to get started. In fact, past time to get started. Good evening, everyone. How is everyone tonight? Sleepy. Sleepy. It must be the weather. We blame it on the weather. So last time we started working on the fluid uh, design, if you recall. I asked you to save the files. So yes, um, I know at least Marie, okay. you guys. Okay. Is there anyone who doesn't have the starter file? Okay, yeah. we, I'll get that for you. And then let's finish uh, co hand coding the fluid design. And then we're going to talk about what else we need to add on top of it to make it responsive, which is uh, essentially the media queries. And then we, if we have more time, my original idea was to finish the existing page that we're working on and then make it responsive. So do that. And then if we have any time left over, we might have an opportunity to start with your template if you have seen your assignment. If you don't have time, then I'll, I'll try to give you more time going forward for lab once we get settled into the project. A couple announcements, though. Uh, first of all, I posted um, an announcement on Canvas about a tech um, interview prepare, prep, and uh, recruiting opportunity. So if you haven't seen that, take a look. And there are 10 students per college that can be nominated. So. Um, it's ran by the Washington Technology Alliance. If you want to do it, email me so I can nominate you. And uh, then I'll, we have to figure out the process from there. But the way the process works is that the instructor needs to nominate you. So send me an email as soon as possible if you were interested in something like that. Um, and uh, the other announcement was, uh, so today is the 12th, I think. Yeah. So the 17th, next Thursday, <laughs> next Tuesday. April 17th, we're going to have a guest speaker uh, from a company, um, a creative you know, strategy and design company called Intentional Futures. And Steve is the creative director there. They have uh, TED Talks and they're very, you know, indeed future oriented. So plan, if you can be here on the 17th from five to six, you'll get the guest speaker. Maybe you'll we'll invite some more folks who might want to join. Okay, any other announcements? I'm good to be. Okay, so let's. So, it the 19th? So it's the 19th, which is a Tuesday. So that, sorry about that. So the 19th, and I will. I think I've marked it on the calendar, but I just wanted to bring it up in class as well. So not the 17th, the 19th of April, five to six. Steve is going to come and give us a, a lecture about using design to, um, I think, simplify complex matters and some other very interesting topics. So with that said, let's go again and finish our fluid design. I actually need a moment so I can give the file over to Bruce. And while I'm doing that, maybe you can, whoever, if you remember what goes into making a design fluid, please pick up and refresh our memories last time. Who remembers what goes into a fluid design? Relative limits. Relative limits, okay. First maybe it's even the image. Relative units and for uh, fonts and anything else? Images also percentage uh, scale, scalable, scalable images. Scalable images. To queries, but we'll do that later. Yeah, this is considered part of the response. Okay, so. Um, so, the structural elements on the page. Okay, so this is your starting point. And you can take my list out. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we're going to open this from brackets. And the reminder that we set the folder before we work with the files. Okay. And that's where we left off. Go ahead and test your file as well, if you would. And if I recall, we have we finished with the HTML page, right? So the HTML page should be ready. And we did we start working on the CSS? Yes, apparently we did. Let's review. So we styled the body, the HTML5, and the, here the block elements. Got to the hover. Okay, we got over to the header, and that's where we stopped. <clears throat> so, then we have the header element again. That's HTML5. We're using HTML5 here, and we're going to set the width to 100%. And the padding, padding on the bottom to two M's. And the hundred percent, you can add a comment if you like. Um, here, I was trying to do HTML comment, but CSS. Um, then this is the full width of the body of the comment. It's uh, well because we want to make it the same idea. Pixels are a fixed unit of measure, so if it's pixels, if you put 20 or 20 pixels, no matter what screen you have, it's always going to be the same. The 20 pixels. It could matter because when we try to make it into a single column, we don't want to have a big gap, so we want to have it out. So what we're doing here, you know, what, what makes it's it's not exactly black or white, but for the most part, what we're making here relative is what you should be concerned with. Okay. Yeah. M, even though it's two or just. No, it's just two M's. Two M's, but it's spelled like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. And now we're going to style the H2 in the header. So it's going to be a header, H, the H2 sitting within the header. Select those. And um, for them, we're going to have a font size of 2.25 M's. And this is going to be, if you would like to add a note, um, the, the, the way this was calculated was the font size 36 divided by our base font size of 16. And so I guess I'd like to also give you a suggestion, which you might be already thinking. Um, it is fine if you want to take the existing uh, code that we're working with and then adapt it for your responsive template, but it can't be the same, right? You must make the relevant changes, but it is okay to work from here in using the reference, right? 
in fact, yours will be more scaled down at this point, so it should have less, and you will have at this point lorem ipsum or kitten ipsum, so sample text and placeholder images. It won't be in a real pasting, a real site. Okay, the color, not really relevant here, but it's going to be uh, F29. Seventy-two e and uh, this is a hexadecimal. Hopefully everyone remembers what it is. Does everyone know what hexadecimal is? Okay. And then the, we're going to add a text, text shadow of two pixels. So we're going to style um, several different values for the text shadow. Uh, three pixels, <coughs> zero, and black. And then the margins we need to also uh, make fluid. So the margin left is going to be 12.1211%. And why do we, how do we get that? We got it by dividing 120, which is the margin in the fixed size, by 990, which is our the width of our page. Does this make sense? Right. And so these are the helpful numbers, maybe especially for you, because otherwise you'd have to figure out on your own. And if you try Googling, for some reason, there is not really a good reference for that. Have anyone, have you tried Googling for references for the appropriate conversions to relative measures? It seems like people just use them, but I haven't really found something that I can share and it's, um, you know, comprehensive. So that, that this will be a reference right here. And then we have the bottom margin. Which will be a quarter of an M. The other thing I was thinking as I was getting ready for today is that you, you, I guess I'd like to ask for your feedback. So we skipped over the chapter about links and creating navigations, but I'm not sure if that was the right thing to do or not. Because we now are going to talk about making our navigation responsive, but I don't know if this class as a whole feels that you have had enough experience creating menus to talk about converting them to responsive. So what do you guys think about that? Refresher. Refresher? Okay. It's not been yeah, it's not easy to ask. So maybe we're going to come back to chapter seven, I believe, and then we want to add uh, a conversation about creating menus and then making those uh, responsive, okay? And so that might mean also that our sites will not have enough today, and then we're going to add them on Thursday, okay? Yeah, that's enough. Okay, so then we're going to style the H3 in the header. And font size, 1.2 M's. In this case, we are doing a 20 divided by um, 16. Font style. Alec and uh, <laughs> left margin, same as above, well, 0.12121%. Again, by dividing 120 by 
990 pixels. Okay, and uh, lastly, for now, the, the image in the header. going to be 8.0808% and this was calculated by the size of the 80 pixels divided by the size of the 990. The max width this can take is 80 pixels, which is the size of the image. And we can make a note here, native size. We're going to float it left. Just try to indent these guys a little better here as well. And we're going to give it the left margin, so margin left 2.02%. I don't know. Just, uh, I guess I continue to think this is the third class, so I guess it's really, I'm just trying to figure out I mean, I teach the first class, so I guess it's my fault too, but why are we always coming up to, we don't, as a group, we don't know the same things and we have to go over. Maybe they're just the kind of things like, with the programming language, you have to take two or three. So maybe it's, that's why. You just have to keep on doing it multiple times, the same task and expanding upon it. And I guess that's why we're where we are, right? Okay, let's see here. What's the um Right. So it's going to be um, the native size. So in this case, it's 20 pixels. It's whatever the pic. When you design your page, you decide that your left margin is going right. to be, let's say, 20 pixels. So we can. Sorry, we should add this here, and then we divide that by 990. Right. And I think that should be. All right, so let's see here, let's save all. So here's our images uh, shrinking, and we're seeing some improvements. That's obviously not yet responsive, but we are seeing some improvements to our fixed design. Now this design is fluid. And uh, I'm going to leave off the navigation items for now. So let's plan to come back to add the navigation later. I guess next week we'll take time to review navigation and then convert it to responsive, as we just discussed. And now, our next step will be to add some media queries here. But before we do that, I would like to give you a present a short lecture 
on the topic. <laughs> So this was one of the important images here, the, the one of the important diagrams, right? So we're moving from fluid to, sorry, from fixed to fluid by doing the same thing, which is changing our fixed units to responsive, right? From the structural elements on the page for the images and for the typography. So here are some, um, let, let's start some discussion about the responsive design. So what is the viewport? The viewport is what you see from the page. So this is your viewport. And um, the viewport has some metadata properties, uh, such as the width, the height, the initial scale. So when you first look at the viewport, is it the actual scale, which is one? And then what is the maximum or minimum scale, or is it user scalable? So there's a properties of the viewport metadata. And uh, it's a meta tag. So meta means data about data or about uh, in this case. Yeah, so the meta is a data about the page. Right? And uh, we have an attribute name uh, with the name of viewport. And then with the vision that you're going to be scaling the content to be the same as the width of the device. And the width of the device, the width is equal to the device width, and we'll be starting with the initial scale of one. So this is the boilerplate part of our responsive design. And let's go to the HTML page. Okay. And um, how do we accomplish this change of, um, of the layout for the page based on different sizes of different devices? Well, we do so by using media queries. So um, the media queries, so this is the syntax for media query, at media, and then you can tell the type, and then you can have on various expressions, and then inside the curly braces, we have the styles that are relevant for a particular media query, right? And so then it's going to change based on the, when it hits, the, the type of the query that is going to change and then apply those particular styles. So all the media queries are going to inherit pre-existing styles and essentially we are overriding them and that's the cascading effect uh, taking place here. Okay, you can uh, scale, sorry, you can, I guess, uh, apply the following properties to the media, screen media type, the width, the height, the device width, and height and whether it's um, uh, landscape or object. Here are some examples of media queries. If you want to check if your viewport is 767 or less, then you can say that the media screen has the max width of 767. So it's, this is the max width it can go. And then if you want to check a range, then you can say, I want it to be between 480 and 767. And screen only, and uh, there are also um, print. So I actually I have to look it up. Do you know what I'm talking about? There are different types besides screen, but we are going to be dealing exclusively with screen. Does this all make sense here? You've seen this before, probably, right? Yeah. Okay. okay, pretty much all modern browsers support media, media queries. And we talked that we can go about creating a response to design in two ways desktop down to model or model to desktop, and um, we said that 
Well, I think it might make sense to start with a model, but this is up to you as a designer. So you're going to decide and apply whichever one you want when you are creating your own template. And then you can we can have a discussion next time which one you applied and what was your experience, right? So if you're going from a desktop down, then you're going to start with a layout between uh, let's say 768 and 959, so this is a comment, of course. And then you want to get here reference to all the different um, ways that you have to create. So max with 959 is going to give you, a, you know, this is the biggest one. And then from here, it is also common, obviously, uh, I should say that in the real world, there are so many different devices that you might need to create many more than three, but in our class, we create Let's let's want to create three, maybe four um, different queries, and that should be sufficient. Maybe a desktop, tablet, and phone. And if you really want to, you can create a landscape and portrait. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then max with seven sixty seven, and max with four seventy nine. So this would be for the model form, for example. Right. So. So far, so good. I don't know why my pointer doesn't work. supposed to be. And what if we were um, doing mobile app? We're going to start with uh, 480, which is uh, standard phone size to 767. So the mean, so we now are, remember in the previous, we were saying the max you can go is, you know, 959 and downward here we're saying the minimum width of this has to be 480 so that's different not here and then the next one would be uh, the minimum width is 76 um, 768 and then for, finally for the tablet landscape or, or desktop with a 960 it has to be at least 960 and if it's at least 960 let's apply the particular styles which are going to apply to it right Okay. And this is the nav, so we're not doing this right now. So these are a couple of terms to take away. And I will have some kind of ungraded quiz for us probably next time to make sure that you know the terms as well. And um, let's go ahead and uh, call up a page with some media queries. See if we can continue with our existing fluid and make it into a responsive here. Are you raising your hand? Okay. So the meta tags that we talked about are going to go in the head of the HTML page. So in the index.html, before the link to the style, and after the title, we're going to have a meta with a name of viewport. And content width is equal to the device width, comma, and the initial scale it's going to equal to one.
Okay, and um, in the main.cs, so that's all for the index file. And I'll go back to the main.css. So I'm trying to combine here. Okay, so we're not doing the map. Okay, but we do have a few more CSS, uh, sorry, HTML5 elements to style. So add a comment. Styles for the section. Okay, so do it. Is everyone comfortable with HTML5 elements we're using here? Okay. The block elements, they again in the before HTML5, we used divs essentially to hold this. So now we're using the, those. Can you have a section? Can you just talk a little bit about how you would use section? Is it for machine readers? Can you have to sort of contain to the machine reader or? Yeah, so it's a semantic. Um, the reason we use HTML5 elements versus divs is because they carry more semantic meaning. In other the words, section. yeah, so a section, uh, it signifies it's sort of a generic. So if you have a generic part of content, then you it makes sense to put it in a section. The section can go in the main, right? And then we can have on a side, but the section combines a various a generic, you know, maybe paragraphs or image. So something that goes together in a section, it will be a section. I don't know if it helps. You just use section instead of div? Yeah, that's the idea. So we, as you can see, we're not really using divs, and the reason why is because we are now using with HTML5 the available elements instead. Otherwise, all this would be divs with the idea of whatever we're doing, div content and uh, side and so on. Right. When is section used over article? Um, a, a section can contain multiple grouped items together, and an article is like its own. It would be its own entity, and you can have an article within a section. But let me check here. So HTML5 uh, tags. Article defines an article in the document, whereas a section defines a section in the document. Okay, so. You guys figure it out. But you can uh, put articles within the section. So, I mean, you know, it's really left a little bit for our interpretation here, but they both group together content of text. Um, since I guess that question arose, maybe we can just look, look up a couple examples here. So, HTML5 article tag. Okay, the article tag specifies independent self-contained content. Should make sense on its own, and it should be possible to distribute it independently from the rest of the site. All right. So you can think maybe it actually makes sense to think of it as an article. You can take the article and put it on a blog, and it's self-contained. How about this? Like a post, yeah. I guess the uh, like a post, and. Um, The same, you know, elements contained within it, but it's a section in documents such as chapters, headers, footers, or any other sections of the document. So I guess I'll still say the same. It's a, it groups logically together, you know, paragraphs or text or maybe images that go in the same category. Okay, so the section width is going to be 54.0404%, which gets calculated by dividing 535 by 990. And again, if, if you had a div, you'd give it a 
you know, width that makes sense. So we're saying 535. It's not going to take up the entire line, but it will be 535 pixels, and then we divide it by 990 to convert to the relative units. And we're going to float it to the left. We have a left margin of 2.0202%. Calculated by dividing 20 by 990. Oh, um, do you remember I told you about one attribute, to, uh, one of the elements that we can't express relative? of the, the ones, the margin from the CSS box model, do you remember? Border. The border cannot be expressed in relative, so just remember that. Border. So border has to be in pixels. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so margin left, and you guys are not even catching my typos, what's going on, <laughs> right? So margin <laughs> left. Just by the way, Wow. Or, the wow. or the percentage, you okay. Mar margin left, you need a semicolon. And uh, up at the top, right. margin left. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, 1.5 ends. Well, the padding is obviously on four sides. So, and then uh, we can also break it down by padding left, right, and so forth. But we're just going to do a shortcut and express all of them in the same line. So, 1.5 ends, 2.52. 525%. This is done just for because we can, to show that we can. And then zero and zero. And when you have a shortcut like that, and by the way, we're dividing by 25 here for the padding. Which of the numbers is referring to which side of the padding? Right. So it's the top. It's, it's the travel acronym, right? So top, top T R B L. So we start with the top, and then R for right. Clockwise from the top. The acronym is travel. So top, yeah, it's it's clockwise, correct? Okay. However, it's easy for you to remember. Okay. And then um, I don't know if we'll be using the list item in the section before we work with the <laughs> nav, but we might. So let's go ahead and add the list item. But it's a bit tedious, I know. But and then we can break down the padding. Here we want only the bottom padding to be 35M, 0.35M. The font size here will be divided, font size 14 divided by the 16 we're going with for our default font.
So we're going to have a H1 in the, inside the section. So I think also doing this exercise will help us appreciate uh, Bootstrap, which does this for us. You can look at it this way. The font size in the H1 will be was calculated by dividing 26 font size by 16. We have a H2 section, so I'm just going to copy this and reuse it since it's very similar. So we have a H2 within the section. The font size is going to be, that's where we make a change, 1.25. And uh, that's calculated by dividing 20 by 16 rather than 26. And the same margin for the bottom. Maybe I'll see, um, I'm thinking that maybe we'll just do some of those as a representative example. So article is next. With 535, the same size as the section, divided by 990. We're going to float it to the left. Does everyone remember what float left will do? It will float it to the left, that's left. right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then margin left. I'm sorry? What does float left do? Do you guys remember floating or do we need to go back two oh, chapters and go? It takes it out of the normal document flow and it Right. Okay. Margin left will be 2.0202%. And again, that's the same. We are using 20 pixels for our margin. So it's the same 20 divided by 990. And padding 1.5M, 2.525%, 0, 0. And we're dividing 25 by 990. There needs to be a space in between zeros, correct? Yes. Thank you. Oh, it's the bottom of 999. <coughs> Excuse me, 30 to 35 on the HTML. Let me check here real quick. I mean, you, you can still add them. Um, I guess we don't have to spend our time, but let me double check here. 
Yeah, so okay, so let's skip over the article and we'll just add the aside. We do have an aside in a section, correct? All right. Although you could, you may want to have this as a reference, but. Um, we do have an aside, so let's go ahead and. Okay, so let's add the side and the footer. I think we can add our, after that, we'll add our media queries. So. Yeah, this is the HTML for the same example. So now I'll go back in the CSS file. All right. So aside. So the width is going to be 35.3535 percent, and that's because the side is about 350 pixels, right? The floor to the left. With a padding of 2.02 or 2 percent. So that would be 20 divided by 990. Background color. One point five, two point zero two, zero zero. And again, that's twenty divided by my mind. Let's, have, let's just add a paragraph inside the side. So it's going to be a side P. It's going to have a bottom margin of 0.5 M. Okay, our example also has H2 and H3. I'm going to add only one of those, so we'll, we can just change the HTML. So let's add an H2. And so the font size will be 1.25 M's. That's 20 by nine uh, by 16 rather. And the padding bottom of 0.5 M. And we have a footer, so let's add the footer code markup. So if our, we need to remember to go back and change, there was H3 in the side, we'll change it to H2 so we don't have to keep on doing the same task over and over, right? If you can, do, does this make sense, right? We'll just change it so we don't have an H3, otherwise we need to call it, we need to account for all of the different uh, tags on the page. So for the footer, well, that's something that will be on every page, so it's good to have the um, code for it. We're going to clear both as far as the floating goes. 
and then width will be 100%. So I want the footer to take the entire width of the body. So add a full width of body. And we can add a border top two pixels solid. Nine seven two E and padding on the bottom of point seven and uh, lastly before we do our media queries we have some text in the footer we need to account for it as well. Okay, so for a paragraph, we're going to divide. Does everyone, is everyone clear? So for example, for a paragraph, why are we using 12? Okay, could you tell us? 12, and the font size to be a 16 or 12 point font. We've already set the whole thing to be a 16 point font. So it's a percentage of the 16 point font. So 12 divided by 16 is right. right. So, and the paragraph happens to be 12 default size on browsers by default right so we're just going with our default what what would be a default font for a paragraph so for example when we did the h2 we have a larger number for the font size because the h2 is a larger font size and that's why these numbers change does this make sense right okay um so if you have a default every Everything we're styling here has a default value in the in the browser. In other words, if we didn't apply any styles, it would use the default styles that are available. And in those, the, the paragraph, like by default, is going to be 12. Does this help, Christopher? OK. All right. And then text align. Thanks, Marine Francine. We want to align the text to the right, so no, no justify. Remember, no justification, and then margin right. When you think about it, we have actually covered the really large amount of information to incorporate and keep in mind as you. Um, as you work through your pages and through your sites, because we have talked a lot about design principles. And so there is actually a lot of information already here for us to account. But in any case, um, so this 20 here is not the size font, obviously, but it's the, what is it, Maida? Are you clear? For the margin? Yeah. Um, I don't know. OK. So what is the 20? That, would anyone like to answer this? Here, why are we dividing this by 20? It's the size it would be in pixels. It's the size it would be in pixels. When you create your page and you did some layout and you like how it looks, it has some margins. And then we take that number that you would have in pixel when you fix design, and then you divide it by the full width to get the relative measure. So that's what we've been doing all along. We're doing the same thing for. Uh, you know, either for the structure or for the images or for the fonts. Okay. I have a question about that. So we aside, for example, we have the same category, we want to be 20 pixels, but the parent element we aside is only 350 pixels. We're going to fix one and pull it. So what if we do 20 divided by 350 and the aside? So, um, yeah, so we do it relative to the width of the page. Of the page. Yeah, we do it relative to the width of the page. That's a good question. All right, so it's 601, and that's a good stopping point. Take a, Save your work, take a break, and then we're going to come back and add a couple media queries. And uh, hopefully we'll get this working before the end of the class.
Let's see. We can take a look because I was curious. Uh, save everything for I 
Okay, guys, let's finish uh, adding some media queries to this example. <clears throat> And then we if we have time, you can start working on your templates. Okay. So because this example turned out to be quite lengthy, again, just to... Are you clear on what we're doing here, even though we're skipping some? Is everyone clear? Yeah. In other words... So, go ahead. I'm clear. I was going to say we need to go back and change the H3 and H2 in the inside. Yeah, we're going to take care of all these things. But essentially, um, I just want to make sure you're clear on the process, which is that if we're creating a responsive design, we need to convert these items. Anything on the page that would be a fixed size, we have to make a change to it to make it uh, with uh, relative units of measure. And that's what we've been doing. Um, we, I sort of skipped over some of them since there are so many of them, but I just want to make sure you get the idea. And then you can practice with your own responsive design where you should just have fewer elements and then apply your responsiveness to those. And now the last part to actually create a truly responsive design, we said besides making fluid, we also need to add the media queries so we can change the size. We can well, not change the size, but rather conditionally change the styles we use based on the size of the screen. Does this make sense? So we're doing that next. And again, we can have 
you know, 10 different sizes, if we wanted to support them, we're just going to do a couple is practice. So go ahead and add a comment. We have a, this is going to be for the mobile landscape to tablet portrait. Not tablet, tablet, there we go. And so we're going to use the Ed Media on the screen. I know that uh, I guess we should look it up. I forgot. I think something that was print, but I would like to, um, sorry, just media types. Sorry, uh, let me just look this up real quick. Media uh, types. Device type of media. Let me search for this. How about device type? Okay, so here is the list, the list. We have all print, screen, or speech. So that's in case you were wondering, right? We are working with screen, but we have some other options here. So when we say only screen, do you say only in front of all those? Like add media only? Because I feel like I'm not working as well. Yeah, so this is one of the. Um, one of the attributes you can use with the media, and you can say, I want this to apply only to screen. That's great. Yeah. All right. So back to our code. Screen and in the end is the logical end. So both conditions must be true. So that's what it means. It must be screen and must have max width. Of 767 pixels. And then, actually, the only change here is something that we don't have, which is that when we add our nav menu, we're going to not want to display it at that size because, and I'm sorry that I, sh I guess I maybe should have done this menu part of the class earlier, but what's going to happen is we're going to learn how to create a, a responsive menu that is going to um, be collapsible and then scale for responsive devices, which is why we don't want this nav menu to show. And the point being is though that whatever style we want to apply this is the place, right? You can change the font to red, the, the font color to red, and then this would show and so forth. And uh, then we're going to display our mobile menu, which we don't have yet, as a display as a block. So we are essentially making everything more column-like and taking up the entire space because we our screen is getting smaller. So instead of taking more width, we are getting more length with column-like um, styles. Okay. And now the body. The width. It's going to go to 100%, so we want it to fill the screen. And we want to get rid of the margins. We don't have a lot of real estate space, so no margins. And We don't need a border since we're just going down to essentials. No border.
the header and the footer they have text in it in, in paragraph tag and this is going to get centered And for the footer, we're going to remove the right margin as well. We just want the footer for this one. No, I'm talking about the one about the 135. It, this means you if you say that then it's going to apply to both so save exactly as it is here header comma footer p so it right. seems like that would be right now it's going to send the whole entire header and the paragraphs inside of the footer but if it's supposed to be paragraphs inside of the header it should be header p comma footer p. this should apply to both uh -huh. so we can test it here okay. now and this is not really ready for testing it but this should apply in here this should descend both from the header and the footer okay all right, and um, let's see what else can we do here. Header. I'm again selectively just making some changes here. So, for how about the section and the article? Oh, we don't have an we don't have an article. Is what it said? Okay. So then the section. We're going to change the width. To 95.9596%. And we are scaling down from the 100% minus the padding of both sides. Now we're going to have everything take its block, so we're going to say float num. Margin right is going to be 2.0202%. And we're going to get rid of the padding on the right. Is there a question there? Okay. okay so, um, you're adding it, so the, uh, the width is essentially by making it 95% of the screen, and if you're giving it padding, you're taking away padding. Because it's smaller size, right? So here you're taking away the padding on both sides, which is bringing it down to 95% of the 100. Yeah. So, so you're taking away. What we're doing is we're making it more narrow. Right. right? So it's, instead of taking 100%, now it's taking 95%. So it's more narrow to accommodate a smaller screen size of the device we're on. And so again, you can keep on adding various other styles that apply to a particular size, but I'm, I think I'm mostly doing just like a sampling of those. And so then this was our mobile landscape to tablet, so it's wide. And now let's go ahead and add uh, the next media query, which will be for a mobile portrait to mobile landscape. And this will be the next size down. Do you uh, close the first feed? Right. 
Okay, so the media query is also, it has its own scope in its own curly <coughs> braces, and uh, we need to close this. So we should have two uh, curly braces before we start our next media query. <coughs> Where was the open one? Okay. The media query contains uh, all our styles, so we open the curly brace and then we close it. Okay, so at media only screen, and now the max width is going to be 479. Yes, I'll close it now so I don't forget. So close, open and close your media query. Okay, and so this is now the really narrow device, right? We, we, this is our third third um, style that we are applying to. And um, here, here our layout will be mostly already in place. If we had an image, we need to float the image to none, so the, the image is going to take up the entire space as well. And let's just add a couple, um, how about the, the header, H2, and the font size is going to be 1.375M. And the P is going to have a font size of 0.875. And we get this number by again 14 divided by 16. So let's go ahead and uh, give this a try. Well, actually, let me also do the, let's change one more thing here. Let's change the footer size, the font size. Since we are sort of not changing everything, at least we have changed everything for the footer, so we should be able to look at it and see the changes here. So the font size for the P in the footer is 6875M. So let me run this and see if we can observe any responsive behavior here. So I think we are seeing the, at least in the heading, some changes, right? I'm sorry? 
Okay. What is doing it? Yeah, I was going to say we put, a, I don't know if that was just working, so we put a display block on the, on the, uh, that. Yeah, the nav was, uh, was like right here. Okay, we can maybe take this out and see if they're just commented out for now. We don't actually. Um, I was going to say, here's what have disappeared. And this was at six six seven sixty seven. So right. well, we didn't really. I don't really want to. Um, I want to comment out the nav actually, since we haven't. We so, sort of partially handled it, right? So we haven't really finished our nav code. <coughs> okay, so let's take a look here. Um, one way we can do this is by adding a font color. So if I add uh, to the body, if we have a color um, like red, so we should see here. Otherwise, we have to run it probably through the validator. Yeah, so this is broken right now because we're not seeing the change of the color, right? Yeah. So this is not working right now. All right. And uh, the other thing is that let me just run it outside of brackets just to be sure. Color. Did it? Okay, yeah. so okay, that, that's what we should see. So something. Okay. Okay. So I guess I have probably to run this through the CSS or HTML5 validator to see. It's a little hard to see what is missing, but um, and then make okay. So if you want to test it. If yours are working, the other thing you can do is then go to the. Okay, let me. Um, okay, actually, tell me that and then I'll give you. Go ahead. Oh, uh, what did you figure out? I didn't have the. Oh, I see that you have that. Sorry. I didn't have the word and on the screen. And that totally Right. Yeah, so this is a kind of long file that I'm just going to run through CSS3 validation to see, or CSS validator to see. If it's working for you, then uh, what you can do is add. Another, so for example, in the paragraph of the footer, go ahead and change the color there to green or some other color, and then that's how you can test it to make sure it works. So I guess I feel like this example was too big and that didn't serve as well. I need to scale it down probably. Um, and so maybe that's the thing to do next to be for you guys to see if you can start working in your responsive template, which is going to scale down what we have here. If it's not working for you, then you can do what I'm doing, which is um, since I'm well, if the color is not working, then it's not working, right? And I have to figure out. It looks like I probably have a typo that is causing this not to work. Um, one other thing we could do is just run the example to show you. Hold on, let's, let's try this instead. Okay, so if yours is not working, then go ahead and run your CSS. It's really going to be difficult to find the error here, but you can run them through a validator, CSS validator and or HTML and then try to find out what the problem is, or you can use your own eyes, but it's going to be you know, time consuming. If it's working for you, then go ahead and start working on your own responsive templates for the template for the assignment, okay?
And what I would like to do is so to... So the is to basically make what we've been working on responsive. And the assignment is to make your own responsive templates. You can you can fall back on, on what we have worked in class, but make it your own and scale it down. Right? Just have it some basics. It's supposed to sort of be like what we're doing for our Yeah, it's going. You you can you will be using your responsive template for the assignments that lead up to the mid, more like the midterm because the final will be a um, bootstrap page. So we're going to switch to bootstrap about halfway to the class a little after. But as long as you're working on your hand coded page, you'll be using your responsive template. So we're doing it on uh, whatever we're, our project proposal? Or well, page. so let me, uh, not exactly. Let's read this together. Okay, so the idea is that you're going to create a template, which means that it's not going to be the concrete project you're working on, but it's going to be a template using sample lorem ipsum text and placeholder images, right? It's not the actual site yet, it's just a template, right? With, I think we said, um, with three, uh, three different styles. So three media queries as part of it, right? That's just one page or is it all the pages in the site? Uh, you can no, start with, Oh, it's not the site. It's going to be the template that you can use later for your site. Okay. Well, what are the for the yeah, site? that's right. Maybe let's say for the home page. Okay. How about we say for the home page? Okay. <laughs> All right. So. I wanted to show you the site finished, so just hang on a second. Don't take off yet. Okay, so here is the site in its finished form. And a lot of it is with the menu. So as you can see, the menu changes. And then we have some margin changes. So um, the changes that we made other than the color were not really very obvious to see other than the nav, which we don't have yet. But that's what, I mean, that, that's what it is. 